another week and another movie that I am saving you from watching. Because, yes, this is Velvet Al watches movies so you don't have to. The only podcast that I'm aware of where Velvet Al watches movies for the express purpose of you not having to. Like I said, that I'm aware of, there could be another podcast out there where there is another Velvet Al and he, or even she, or they, I am not going to presume pronouns on this other hypothetical Velvet Al, they will watch movies so you don't have to. So, I could be wrong. I could not, it's possible that there is another Velvet Al watching movies so you don't have to. So I shouldn't say that I'm the only podcast, but as far as I'm aware, I am the only podcast featuring Velvet Al watching movies. You know, it's not the only podcast that features Velvet Al. I do have another podcast that I've pretty much given up, but technically there's another podcast that exists with Velvet Al and there's countless podcasts where other people watch movies. Um, But do they do so for the express purpose so that you don't have to? That is the question. These other podcasts, they watch bad movies and they review them. But are they doing it out of the kindness of their own heart to help you, the listener? I don't know. So so I consider my podcast superior to every other bad movie podcast because I am doing it with you in mind. So, this week, sorry, I'm distracted again by my cat's chirping, because he just loves it when I yell. (laughs) I yell, and I don't know if the chirping is, oh, that is so awesome, or I am worried about you, Daddy, and here's some chirping to calm you down and make you feel okay. I appreciate it. So, this week, we've got Captain Battle Legacy War or alternately known as Battle Soldier. That's what Tubi is telling me the title is Battle Soldier, but I had searched it up under Captain Battle Legacy War, and when I googled Battle Soldier movie, it comes up Captain Battle Legacy War. So, I don't know, we'll see what the actual credits say. Sometimes these movies, they get released and then re-released with different titles to kind of trick you and you think like oh it's not that crappy movie i saw it's another crappy movie so this film is about a scientist transforms a gravely injured soldier into a super crime fighter to destroy a group of neo-nazis you know that kind of sounds familiar ah you know I'm probably just, you know, overthinking it. I'm sure this is 100% completely original and not in any way trying to piggyback off some other film that is popular. No, not in any way. So, without further ado, I will press play. We start off with this guy who kind of looks like Michael P.S. Hayes, professional wrestler. Yes, I hear you chirping. Seriously, my my cat loves when I do this podcast. I don't know why. Because you don't love the podcast. No, I kid. Of course you love the podcast. That's why you're listening, right? So we start off with Michael P.S. Hayes lookalike. And he's going to his Jeep. And there's a, there's a letter or a note or something. It's a piece of paper with a swastika. And it says, catch us if you dare. Which is kind of crazy. Because... If you know anything about Michael P.S. Hayes, he is a uh, fucking racist as hell. So, the fact that the Nazis are targeting this guy who looks like Michael P.S. Hayes is kind of crazy. Because Michael P.S. Hayes also looks like the fucking stereotypical, like, redneck guy, too. So, but this is a good guy redneck who the Nazis hate. So, that goes to show, don't judge a book by a cover. Just because this guy looks like the... Typical redneck who would be waving the Confederate flag. And for all I know, maybe he does wave the Confederate flag. And he sees Confederate flags different from Nazis. So Michael P.S. Hayes chases after the Nazis. Uh, they've got their own like little minivan or something. 
Uh, they've got an SUV, like not quite a Jeep. Like he's got the open Jeep and, you know, they see him and they're like, oh shit, we didn't think he'd actually chase us. So they call their other Nazi friend, which they're not really dressed as Nazis, but, you know, they've got the whole swastika thing going. They must be Nazis, but they're wearing hoods. Uh, they've got like ski masks on. And they call their other friend who's on a motorcycle, and they're shooting, and Michael P.S. Hayes is shooting at them, and all the gunfire is, like, bad CGI. And then the Nazis pull out rocket launch launchers, and they shoot out bad CGI rockets that then, you know, cause an explosion with lots of bad CGI fire. Um, And, like, when I say bad CGI, I mean this shit would make a movies in the 90s go like whoa 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 that is some really shitty cgi and and then what so then uh michael ps hayes is dead and they come and they drape a swastika flag on his body and then we get the credits for it's actually kind of a rocking theme song do 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 which i can't sing but uh i liked it and so this, the movie's called Battle Soldier, I guess. Uh, but again, that's something that they can change out. Uh, could be Captain, could officially be Captain Battle. Uh, so apparently, this is actually based on a real comic book character because the intro is like uh, intercuts between actual footage of Nazis and shots of the comic book. Uh, so Captain Battle, I quickly looked it up. He's pretty much a Captain America ripoff, if you didn't realize that. But I didn't realize, like, it was based on an actual Captain America ripoff comic. I thought it was just a movie where, like, well, Captain America's popular. Let's cash in on that by making our own, like, semi-Captain America. But this is based on an idea that people in the 40s had, like, Captain America's fucking popular. Let's have our own, you know, Captain America-type superhero who fights Nazis. Except ours has an eye patch. Which, okay, I'll give them that. Uh, kind of looks cool. So I guess it's basically Nick Fury decided to take the super soldier serum. Because he does kind of look like Nick Fury. And Nick Fury wasn't created until like the 60s. So Nick Fury is ri ripping off Captain Battle. But I think that would actually be fucking awesome. If Marvel Comics was like, you ripped off our Captain America. We're ripping off your Captain Battle, but ours is a super spy instead of super serum. So now we're in Iraq, where Sergeant Battle, I guess he hasn't been promoted to captain yet. He's got to take the super serum first. But Sergeant Battle, he's talking to the medic, and he's, I don't know, depressed about something. um, Because he's off in war, you know? And... Okay, I've never been to Iraq, but I've seen movies and TV shows that are in Iraq, and I'm pretty sure this is not Iraq that they're in. In fact, they're in a, it looks like they're in front of a green screen, which, if it was a green screen, anyhow, couldn't you get, like, actual footage of Iraq? I don't know, I mean, maybe this is Iraq, at least, like, the back green screen footage anyways the captain or whoever's above sergeant battle i don't know captain's a higher than the sergeant right i don't know i don't know the rankings of the military i apologize for that that is i feel like that's a failing on my behalf so you know he sends sergeant battle off to investigate something and he's there with a girl soldier and she figures, like, ah, oh, this can't be much of a mission, because if they were in real trouble, they wouldn't send Captain or Sergeant Battle with me, because he looks like a wimp. But I don't know, he, he does he's not, like, scrawny like Steve Rogers was at first. He just looks like a regular soldier. But I guess he's probably just a pussy soldier. So she's, you know, too busy doing her manicure, because she's a girl... <laughs> That is why you don't send girls to war, because they're just going to be too busy fixing their manicure. So, uh, only men 
for the army. But real men, not men like Sergeant Battle. So they're walking when suddenly these Arabs, Muslims, uh, terrorists come running in. And you know that they're terrorists because they're not speaking actual... Um, fuck, what do Iraqis speak? What, whatever they speak, whatever any Muslim from that area speak, I'm pretty sure these uh, terrorists are not saying it. They're not speaking it. They're just kind of just rambling nonsense. Like, and, you know, again, that is not racist on my part, because I'm not saying that's how people in the Middle East speak. That is what this film is saying people in the Middle East speak. Like, Actually, they don't even call for Allah. So are these real terrorists? I mean, you, you're making stereotype terrorists and you don't even have the balls to have them call for Allah. I'm just saying. And so one of them stabs Captain Battle. Or, sorry, Sergeant Battle. He's not Captain yet. They stab Sergeant Battle. Apparently leaves a woman alone because, you know, because I guess they're like, yeah, she's a woman. What is she going to do? I don't know why my terrorist suddenly has an Italian accent. <laughs> but they're like, yeah, what's she going to do? She's just a girl. And then they blow themselves up. And we get the bad CGI. I fucking love, like, this bad CGI. It's not quite the level of the Amazing Bulk. Which, if you ever see Amazing... If you have the chance to watch Amazing Bulk, do so. That is just mind-blowingly, like, bad which you have to expect, because, you know, you got a Hulk ripoff character, so you got to use it on CGI, but they don't have anything beyond Microsoft Paint. And, like, the 90s version of Microsoft Paint to work with. So it is, like, gloriously horrible. Um, so this quite isn't on that level, because they don't have any, like, fully CGI characters. But the bomb explosion is just perfection of badness. So... But apparently this doesn't cause any damage because Sergeant Battle still just has the stab wound. And meanwhile, the girl soldier, who has no wounds, no damage whatsoever, even though a guy just blew himself up like five feet away from you. <laughs> and no damage. Okay, maybe not five feet, but still, within reasonably close proximity, then it's going to do some damage. And even if not from the explosion itself, like, debris and shit's gonna hit you, she's perfectly fine. She has got no damage whatsoever. It didn't even scuff up her manicure. But she uh, takes Sergeant Battle to the medic, and the medic's like, I don't know what I can do for him. He's got a stab wound. Whoa, we, we got a... I can't save him from that. I'm sure I'm just a medic <laughs> for the army. And you'd think I'd have, like, supplies that could fix a fucking stab wound. And even if the explosion hurt him, it couldn't have been that bad because the girl got no damage. And yeah, he was closer to the explosion, but the explosion wasn't bad enough to hurt her because she wasn't that far. So, me the medic, I think he's just lazy. Or he's, like, just... I don't know. I guess he just forgot his supplies back at America. But no, not all of his supplies because the captain, um, whoever, he's the top guy because he's got a beret. So he's like more than just a regular soldier. He's like a top level executive soldier. Because when you're a uh, high level, you get the beret. And really, I think that's the only people, reason people join the army and work their way up is because they want that beret. And the beret, I gotta admit, the beret is awesome. But beret guy tells the medic, Well, I know about your secret serum, and this man is your friend, so use the serum on him. And the medic's like, Whoa, 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 this is kind of an experimental serum. I don't know if I want to do it. Just do it, soldier. And so he gives Sergeant Battle the serum, which causes Sergeant Battle to have some hallucinations. And you know shit's gonna go crazy. Because then the camera switches to, like, a negative, like, the photo negative. Like, oh, man, this has totally, like, done some damage on his body. It's just going to fucking go haywire on him. He is not going to be the same man. 
now it's three months later and Sam Battle is admiring the muscles that he did have. Like I said, it's not like he was a weakling uh, beforehand, but since the special effects weren't good enough to make him into like a little beanpole type guy, um, we're just going to have to pretend he did not have these muscles beforehand. He has them now and he's amazed because you just don't get muscles like this overnight. You do with the serum, which he doesn't know about yet. But his scientist friend, well, I guess he's a scientist now, the medic from the army, who's also a scientist, he comes by and he's like, oh, I just want to check up on things you're doing. And ba- Sergeant Battle is like, I know there's something more to this. I don't just heal overnight and get muscles like this overnight, which it's been three months, so technically it's not been overnight. But he's probably not been doing anything, so yeah, his body should have atrophied or something, right? I don't know. I don't know what he's been doing for these three months. So he's like, there's something you're not telling me. And the medic friend is like, okay, I created this serum in my search to cure cancer. This is always to cure cancer. And that's a noble cause. So, but, you know, the scientists never figure out how to actually cure cancer. Actually, he did figure out how to cure cancer. But in addition to curing cancer, it can make you into a super soldier. So he's still got to refine things because he doesn't want, like, a lot of super soldiers out there. Um, He just wants to cure cancer. He doesn't want to make everyone into, like, a superhuman, which is also noble. Because you can't just go around creating an army of super people. And if the U.S. Army knew about this, which they know about it, because Beret Guy told the medic to use the serum. He knows about it. He knows what you've got going on. But, you know, he's going to downplay it. And the medic friend, he's going to have to just, you know tweak the formula so that it doesn't work as good as it does and then blah 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 they talk about i don't know something the formula he shows battle like the notes on the formula and apparently sergeant battle knows how to knows science enough to know what's going on and then medic friend's sister shows up and hey she's a hottie and she wants to go out in the town and uh, have a good time. Yeah, Sergeant Battle, you show her a good time. You show her what a super soldier can do. And I don't care if you want to or not. I'm living vicariously through you, Sergeant Battle. So you, uh, you tap that. You tap that like a super soldier would. Now we're at a strip club. And I thought uh, the medic friend's sister took them to the strip club. I was like, oh, that is awesome of her. But no, no, they're not at the strip club. Some neo-Nazis are at the strip club. And we get titties! 18 minutes in. So it doesn't quite pass the Velvet Owl test. And if you're new, the Velvet Owl test says that within the first 15 minutes, a film should have gratuitous nudity in case that it's so terrible you want to turn it off after 15 minutes, at least you got some nudity out of it. But you know what? I'm in a good mood today. I'll let Captain Battle slide. This film sort of passes the Velvet Owl test. Close enough. So then the stripper gives one of the neo-Nazis a lap dance, and he pulls out a gun on her. You know, as you do while you're getting a lap dance. And he points it, like, up to, like, her chin. So it's, like, one of those, like, under her head. And um, he's taking her hostage. Because the neo-Nazis have to get out of there for some reason. And they need a hostage. And I don't know how, like, you know, the bouncer hasn't, like, made an attempt. Like, I can understand, like, okay, you want to be kind of careful because the gun's right to her head. And the neo-Nazi can just blow the stripper's brains out. And you don't want that to happen. But no one, like, notices it. 
you would think like someone would see the gun and go, ah, oh, gun, and run so that they can get out of the way so that they don't get shot. You know, they hide behind another stripper or something. You know, no one's reacted, so apparently no one's seen the gun, even though it's kind of in plain view. And, you know, they just uh, leave with the stripper. Which, I can understand that, you know, no one wants to put the stripper's life in danger, so they're not going to try to tackle the neo-Nazis. But no one reacts! It's like no one notices that um, they just came and kidnapped the stripper. So the Nazis take the stripper to the secret hideout, which is where they breed. They kidnap all these Aryan women with the master race genetics. And they breed them. They just rape them and fuck them till they get pregnant. But it's not about making the babies because they them take them to another secret location where they abort the babies so that they can harvest the stem cells. So it's not about raising master race babies. Master race stem cells. You know, this is why people are against stem cell research. Not on any sort of religious beliefs or anything like that. It's because they're worried that the Nazis are going to keep a harem of women that they're going to rape and create babies so that they can then harvest the stem cells and drink that sweet baby juice. Sweet fetus juice. Although the Nazis are onto something, we should be doing more with stem cells. I don't agree with the kidnapping women and forcing them to get pregnant aspect of it. Um, Republicans are fine with the uh, forcing them to get pregnant aspect of it, I'm sure. But we should do more stem cell research. Over at the good guys, Sergeant Battle and his medic buddy and his medic buddy's sister did not go out on the town. They just stayed home and drank a lot. Well, the other two did. Sergeant Battle did not drink. So he offers to give the sister a ride home. Like, hey, baby, I'll give you a ride home because you're drunk. But Sergeant Battle, he's not going to take advantage. He's just going to take her home. And on the drive home, we learn she's a journalist. And she's been doing some studies and stories. And there's a rising Nazi population. And... Then she goes off on some tangent about bringing the troops home. And, you know, she knows Sergeant Battle's a military guy and rah, rah, rah. But she disagrees with the war. Which was kind of a big jump from the, there's a lot of fucking Nazis in town to let's pull out of Iraq. So next morning, Sergeant Battle goes to pick up the medic's sister. And they go over to the medic's hotel room. To see what's going on. And oh my god he's not there. And the entire room is trashed. And there's a big swastika spray painted on the wall. And they seemed not that concerned. I, I, I'd i be like kind of freaking out. Like holy shit the Nazis came. And they fucking took my brother and my best friend. And they're just kind of like. Just a little chillaxed. Not even calling the cops. Not calling for help. Um, and it's a hotel. Where's the hotel manager calling for help? Didn't he see anything going on? But the the sister, the lady journalist, I don't know what to call her. I'll go with lady journalist. It's less cumbersome than saying the medic's sister. A lady, I could bother to learn her name, but I won't. She starts talking to Sergeant Battle and like, oh, you're George Battle's son. I think it was George Battle. I don't know. I don't remember uh, the first name of Sergeant Battle's dad. Um, which comes as a surprise to her, I guess. Like, you know, how many people with the surname Battle do you know? <laughs> so that would have been my first thought. Like, oh, you're Battle. You are must be related to this other guy named Battle. And I guess his dad was a cop. That was murdered. Except, you know, the official death wasn't murder. And the whole kibosh was put on the story. Because she's a journalist. 
and she was trying to do the story on it. But the bo- the word came on from the big boss, gotta kill the story. So we don't want anyone knowing that George Battle was murdered. And, like, this all seems like it's much more important than the fact that the her brother is possibly dead. Attacked by Nazis! So the medic friend has been taken to one of the Nazi secret layers, where a Nazi dominatrix, sexy Nazi dominatrix, which I hate myself for. I should, I mean, like the sexy dominatrix part gets completely canceled out by the fact that she's a Nazi. But I can't deny that she does have the sexy dominatrix part down. Fucking like. She Wolf of the SS, except she's a redhead. I think the she Ilsa She Wolf of the she, <laughs> Ilsa She Wolf of the SS was a blonde, wasn't she? Because she's a Nazi, and the Nazis love their blondes. And maybe this is how she survives and didn't get put into like the uh, rape center was because she's a redhead. But she's going to try to get that formula out of the medic because using that super soldier formula, I mean, no, we can't call it the super soldier formula. It's not that at all. It is something completely different. But if they can get that and combine that with whatever genetic testing they're doing with the stem cells, it'll be a Nazi super race. But... The medic friend, he's not going to give it up. Not easily. Meanwhile, the medic's sister, lady journalist, has taken Sergeant Battle. And at what point does he get promoted to captain? You called the movie Captain Battle. Is it going to be like at the end? Isn't that the way these origin stories always go? Like, it isn't until the end that they finally get their proper rank. I guess this is an origin story, so I should be a little more patient. Let's not rush to Sergeant Battle being promoted to captain just yet. And he still doesn't have an eye patch. I hope we get that story here. Why does he have an eye patch? He's he's got to lose an eye at some point in this film. I would have thought that that was going to be like within the first 10 minutes, like when he got attacked in the war, that he was going to lose his eye. So, but he's already gotten this, not the super soldier serum, completely different serum. He's gotten it, so how is he going to lose his eye? Anyway, they go to this guy that the girl knows, who was friends with Sergeant Battle's dad. Or at least knew Sergeant Battle's dad. I don't know if they were friends' friends. And he said, like, yeah, your dad, um, he wasn't just a cop. He was pretty much just a mercenary. And he went and killed people that the cops, they needed plausible deniability. You know, he was pretty much a secret ops mercenary. Whoopsie, well, this meeting didn't go as well as planned, and Sergeant Battle is all, like, upset. Like, no, that can't be my dad. So the lady journalist takes him to Kentucky Fried Chicken or something. I don't know. (laughs) There was some fast food restaurant i think i don't know she just kind of pulled in the back lot of something and she's like i'll be right back which so everyone knows you don't say i'll be right back because that means you're gonna get murdered she doesn't get murdered but she gets kidnapped by the nazis and sergeant battle tries to run after the nazi vehicle that is taking her away but even with his superhuman strength he cannot catch the car and there was one Nazi that's left behind, and he holds a knife to the Nazi's throat. And like, you tell me where they went. He's like, I'm not telling you. You tell me, or you're dead. I'm dead either way. And Sergeant Battle just can't kill him. See, this is why the fucking Nazis call your bluffs. <laughs> like, they know that deep down you're not actually going to kill them. But if they tell you the information, their Nazi bosses are absolutely fucking 100% guaranteed to kill you back at the nazi secret lair the nazi dominatrix is still trying to get the medic to work with her and okay i get the 
they're American neo Nazis, but I would have liked a little German accent, even if it was a bad German accent. You're a Nazi dominatrix. But, of course, the medic's still like, no, I'm not going to help you in your evil cause. Like, aha, but we got something that'll make you. It's your sister. And they probably said some stuff, and I got distracted because with the way they were, like, jostling the sister around, I thought a nip slip was going to happen. And my focus went entirely to the possibility of a nip slip. I had my finger on the pause button, like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh. It did not happen. But anyhow, so the medic agrees, like, fine. Should I call him a scientist? Because he, he's now basically a scientist. He's like, fine, I will help you. Just don't kill my sister. And so the Nazi dominatrix tells her plan. Because not only is she a Nazi dominatrix, she's a necromancer. And their plan is to clone the body of who else? Adolf Hitler. Yes, the Adolf Hitler. Where was I going? I'm distracted again, because I'm still thinking of the nip slip that didn't happen. So they're going to clone Hitler's body and use her necromancy powers to bring his soul back into the cloned body. And they will attack China and start World War Three. Not really sure why China's going to be their first point of attack. Um, you know, it's like your big uh, problem the first time around was you guys attacked Russia. And that was just kind of like not a good plan. So I don't know if attacking China is a good plan because... They're big, they've got a lot of people, they're fucking crazy, and as much as America's gonna pretend they're not gonna help, they are gonna fucking help. Because <laughs> America, at this point, is a fucking paper tiger that needs China. So, yeah, the Nazis attack China. America's gonna come after the Nazis. I mean, the America... And fuck, like, you've already got, like, the cover for the Americans to be like... Uh, well, it has nothing to do with China and how they are propping up the American dollar. It is because they're Nazis. We've got a whole thing. We've got the history. So, you know, they're going to pretend that it's all about fighting Nazis again, but it's about protecting China. So why would you attack China first? There's got to be other countries. Go for Poland again. Um, That was... You know, just follow your original strategy. It worked until you got to fighting Russia. And then, you know, don't partner with the Japanese this time and don't attack America. And you kind of got a better chance. I mean, I'm not a war strategist, so you probably shouldn't take advice from me. Now, actually, if you are Nazi planning... To start World War Three, please take advice from me so that you can fail miserably. So Sergeant Battle puts on his costume. Not really sure when he got a costume, but he's got one. It's blue, and it's got a big star on the chest, which is totally 100% original. Not attempting to be any other superhero at all. He's also got his eye patch. Um, which I feel... I missed something? Was there like 20 minutes cut out of this film? And they were like, ah, fuck any plot holes that that leaves. So Sergeant Battle shakes down some Nazis for some information. And then the next morning, he doesn't have his eye patch, So it's just part of the costume. Which begs the question, what sort of tactical advantage would you get from wearing an eye patch you don't need? Because you're cutting your vision in half there. Uh, is he expecting his other senses to pick up the slack and he becomes, like, super hearing? Because I don't think it works that way if you still have one eye. I think you have to lose your vision entirely for the other senses to start picking up the slack. Meanwhile, at the Nazi secret lair, 
the Nazi dominatrix has revived one of the head Nazis, not Hitler, but one of the other ones. And something must have gone wrong in the reanimating process because now his face is just completely red. Hmm. A Nazi whose face is just red. No, no, I can't think of where I'd seen something like that before. But the uh, medic scientist guy, he promises her that when it's time to reanimate Hitler, they will not have the same problem. So I guess, you know, when Hitler comes back to life, he will not have a red face. So Sergeant Bado goes to see that guy that knew his dad. And, you know, he broke uh, Sergeant Bado's illusions of his father beforehand but now he gives further context that yeah his father was kind of like a mercenary doing all sorts of fucked up killing but it was because he felt that the government you know focused too much on fighting the international wars and was not focusing on the unpatriotic americans that were destroying the country from the inside and that's enough for sergeant battle to say i gotta carry on i don't know <laughs> i was i i started glossing over because man these guys are just boring but they decide to join forces and other dude is gonna help sergeant battle and meanwhile red face is training some of the neo-nazis but he doesn't think they're very good he doesn't think that they have what it takes to truly be nazi soldiers and the Nazi dominatrix tells him, don't worry, everything's going to be fine. Everything's coming according to plan. And damn, she's hot. I, I really wish she wasn't a Nazi. Because she is hot. But her Naziness cancels out that hotness. But it's okay, because she is just an actress. And she probably is not a Nazi in real life. So I... I will keep that in mind, like, you know, she's a Nazi, but she's just an actress, so it's okay to think she's hot. Yeah. So then now it's nighttime, and some of the neo-Nazis uh, have a plan to kill black people, I think, because they start talking about dark meat. So I assume they're going to go attack black people, and they've got Molotov cocktails. But here comes Sergeant Battle in full uniform. With his eye patch. Which, why? Why does he have an eye patch? Like, is it supposed to, like, instill fear into, like, the criminals? Like, oh no, he's got an eye patch. He just doesn't give a fuck. Because he's missing an eye. I am trembling in fear. I just, I don't know. But, because <laughs> of course, you know, superheroes have to have, like, that snappy one-liner... And he comes up, he's like, you guys having a cocktail without me? Oh, jeez. You know, Captain America would not stoop himself to such bad one-liners. But, Sergeant Battle's not even a captain yet, so I guess I can forgive him. And we go into a fight scene. Quite possibly one of the worst fight scenes I've ever seen. That for some reason is in slow motion. Which isn't too bad of an idea if, you know, you actually could choreograph a fight scene. And had people who could actually hit each other. But no, none of the punches are like anywhere near. It's like his punch goes like a foot in front of the other guy's face and the other guy's fall. It's like just terrible, like pro wrestling like the absolute worst pro wrestling where you're like you didn't even hit the guy and that's why it's bad in slow motion because you can just really see it like if you have bad choreography then it's all about like just quick sharp editing so that you don't really have a chance to see the punch but no it's like super slow motion so you can see the punch do 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 stop well before the guy's face and then the guy like reels back from this phantom punch maybe that is sergeant battle's true power the phantom punch and so he's uh kicking ass sort of 
And then Redface shows up. And since Sergeant Bato isn't that good of a fighter, Redface manages to subdue him, like, super easily. He, he doesn't even break a sweat. He doesn't sweat off any of his red face makeup. He just subdues him and cat. I want to keep calling him Captain Battle, but he has not become a captain yet. Or maybe he has. Because why not? He's got a fake eye patch. Why not just start calling himself Captain? I'm, I'm just... So if I call him Captain Battle, just know it's because I want to... I want him to be a captain, and not because he got promoted to a captain. If he gets promoted to a captain, I will let you know. Otherwise, if I slip up, just... I don't know, like, why is he just a sergeant? You know, you don't have Sergeant America, First Lieutenant America. You know, there probably has been, like, some, like, storyline that Marvel has just completely forgotten or, like, chosen intentionally to forget, like, of the whole, like, Sergeant America and a Lieutenant America. And people are like, oh, why did you do this? This was a dumb idea. So the Nazis and Red Face uh, head back to the Nazi lair to report their failure. But uh Nazi dominatrix chick, she uh, isn't too concerned because, you know... They're getting close to work on the serum. They're soon going to bring Hitler back. And she tells them, Oh, go read up some files on Captain Beto. <clears throat> Excuse me there. Um, so, there's research on Captain Beto. Which is, uh, I think, Sergeant Battle's dad. Because he hasn't become a captain yet, so the file can't be on him. Meanwhile, Sergeant Battle, he meets up with the journalist guy who's helping him, and he says, like, I might be close to something, because there's this super rich guy, one of the richest men in the world, and he's been arrested for torturing people, and he's bought, like, all these empty warehouses. I'm onto something. I'm very close. And Sergeant Battle's like, okay, you keep on that. I'm going to go do my own research in the safety of my own house. I don't know why he had to go to his house. Um, I think his research was actually looking looking up porn. Because he's on his bed with his laptop. That's what I think. I think the pants were about to come off. But then he falls asleep. And in come some of the neo-Nazis who knock him out. You know, Sergeant Battle isn't very much of a super soldier. I don't think the serum really did all that much for him. Like, he didn't do very good at the fight. He was easily, like, subdued by Red Face. And now some Nazis came in and hit him with a bat. And that was enough to knock him out. And they take him to the secret Nazi lair. And he's tied up. And Nazi dominatrix chick is, you know, spilling the beans. Telling the whole story. And, you know, they've resurrected Himmler. And up next... They're going to resurrect Hitler, and they're going to take over the world. <laughs> and she keeps calling him Mr. Battle. Like, so you see, Mr. Battle, the war is lost, and I don't know, all sorts of other cliches. But meanwhile, because they only tied his hands up with rope. He, uh, you know, they should know better. Don't tie up a super soldier with rope, because he's just going to untie that rope. And he gets his hands free, and she keeps calling him Mr. Battle. And, of course, because the movie can't resist. Mr. Battle was my father's name. <laughs> oh, boy. And he stands up, and he's got his fist. And she's like, you wouldn't hit a girl, would you? And luckily, he wouldn't. Because none of his punches ever hit. But... His shadow punch has knocked her out. Now, luckily for Sergeant Bado, there was only one person on guard. And it was Redface. Red, Redface uh, was guarding the Nazi compound secret lair. 
And he happened to be looking in the other direction, and Sergeant Battle was able to sneak past him. Like, seriously. Like, um, yeah, Redface, you're shitty. Like, you're the fucking former Himmler. And you, you didn't even hear him, like, walking past you. Like, like, okay, I get it that you're looking the other way. But clearly, someone just walked past you. Kind of ran past you. Wouldn't you hear something and, like, turn, see your face and see, like, oh, hey, that guy that's supposed to be tied up, he's, uh, running away. Maybe he did see him, and he's like, fuck this shit. I'm too old for this. I'm just sick of this <laughs> attempt to bring back the Third Reich. So, now the journalist friend calls Sergeant Battle, like, I've narrowed it down. I found the junkyard that I think is the Nazi lair. And Sergeant Battle's like, um, yeah, already know was taken there, but thanks for uh, keeping me updated. And so Sergeant Battle, he just needed to get his outfit because I think that's where his secret power lies is in that outfit. Because, you know, he needs the eye patch. How is he going to fight without the eye patch? So he comes back to the compound at night, and the Nazi dominatrix, who has woken up by this point, sees him on the security cam and decides, okay, shit's about to go down. So she uh, gets a gun and is about to head out. Meanwhile, the scientist, he's escaped from whatever and finds his sister. Like, well, let's get out of here. And then, meanwhile, some undercover cops show up. I don't know if they were alerted to what's going on or do they just happen to be in the area. So they start shooting at some of the neo-Nazis, and the neo-Nazis are shooting back. And then there's these other group of neo-Nazis that are about to rape the strippers. Remember the strippers that are there to get raped to get pregnant? Yeah, they were there, and the Nazis were about to raped them, but they're like, oh, I hear gunfire, what's going on? And while they turn their backs, the strippers pull out bats and knock them unconscious. And where did you get these bats? I'm questioning how well this whole neo-Nazi organization is being run. <laughs> like that, the strippers that you kidnapped have access to bats. And they were just waiting for the perfect moment to attack you with the bats. Now, Captain Battle reaches to the Nazi dominatrix. And yes, he is Captain Battle. She calls him Captain Battle. So I guess putting on the suit just um, promoted him up to Captain. And so he tries to get her from running away. But here comes Redface, who, again, with, like, no effort whatsoever, pretty much, like, subdues Captain Battle. And Nazi Dominatrix has a syringe. And she's like, ha, 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 we got the scientist to create the anti-serum. And it's going to reverse all the effects of your super serum. Um, which are slightly accelerated healing? Because this uh, super serum hasn't really given him much powers in the way of, like, super strength. Because he keeps getting his ass kicked. And... I don't know. Maybe it improved his vision, and that's why he can go with an eye patch. Is that what the super serum... Super serum hasn't really done jack shit for him. But now it's going to reverse it, and she gets off into a van and drives away. While Redface is going to fight Super Serum. Um, <laughs> I mean, Captain Battle, who now who now has had the effects of the Super Serum taken away, kills Redface by staking him through the heart. So I don't know. Maybe the Super Serum was holding Captain Battle back. Because <laughs> he loses it, and he can finally kill Redface, who... He 
could never get any offense against. And for some reason, they do a super close up of Red Face's face to show he's dead, except his eyes twitching. Like you couldn't cut that 30 seconds. He's lying in a pool of blood. I got the idea that he's dead. Did you need to show his face and the fact that he couldn't stay still long enough to convey that he's dead? Or I don't know, it might be the post-mortem eye twitch. Um, does, does your eyes start twitching after you die? I don't know. No, seriously, I don't know. Don't ask me questions like this. So, I guess that's the end, and Captain Battle meets up with uh, the scientist and his sister, and turns out that the antidote wasn't really an antidote. It was a placebo. Because he wasn't going to create a real, like, antidote to the serum. Because what he did was the recreation of the serum... That was a fake. That was a placebo. So, I, I'm confused. Because I think the antidote that he created only worked on the serum he created for the Nazis, which wasn't a real serum. So, I, I don't know. I, I guess that means Captain Battle still has his slightly above average strength. Which I don't even know if it's that strong. I don't know if he's, like, slightly above average strength or just average strength. I don't know. What average are we going with? I mean, I bring the average way, way down. So take me out of the equation, and maybe that's the average strength is where Captain Battle is at. But he can't quit now because the Nazi dominatrix is still out there. And the scientist and his sister are like, well, we're going to join you. We're going to help you. We can't let you do this battle alone. And that's the end. I was hoping for at least like a little tease, like during the credits or something, like an after credits scene, or even just at the end of the credits, it's saying, Captain Battle will return. But no, they, uh, they did not have high hopes, I think. Because I've seen some films where for some reason they think like they will get a sequel and it will say like so-and-so will return not captain battle they're like yeah we don't really think we're gonna get a sequel so we're not even gonna tease you guys that captain battle will return we know he's not gonna return um and i don't know how i feel about that i almost do want uh, another captain battle not so much that I want Captain Battle. I just want that Nazi dominatrix back. She was hot. And the scientist sister was also hot. So in my head, I am writing the sequel. And Captain Battle's not there. The uh, scientist isn't there. It's just the sister and the Nazi dominatrix. And they realize the only way to settle this is to make sweet, sweet love. So I'm going to go now and finish working that out in my head. Velvet Al at Hotmail.com. That maybe one day someone will actually email me. Or you can leave a comment on the comment section, which one day I will probably read. There have been a couple, I think. And then I completely forgot about them and never read them. And I don't feel like looking them up right now. So I will... Next episode, I pro I promise, and by promise, I will po probably not keep, but I will try next episode to read some of the comments that were left on my YouTube videos, which I may actually have read before and I've forgotten. Whatever. Do what you like. I love you guys.